Okay, welcome back. This is now tutorial nine. Um, I'm building on what I'd done on Warehouse 8 or Tutorial 8, so let's just change the name of that. Show Properties, Show Building Properties, and let's change the name to Warehouse 9. As I said before, if that field is not avail available to you or it's grayed out and you can't uh, write in it, you'll need to go to Costex Options and you'll need to make sure the Rename Building checkbox is selected. Um, in this case it is, so I'm going to click Update. Now I have a new tutorial called Warehouse 9, um, and this is good practice whereby you actually make a copy of each of the tutorials or each time you work on a particular building. I suppose if something happens, the building you're working on, you used to have a previous version to go back on and build on again. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to use um, what we created in tutorial 5 in terms of a workbook. To do that, I need to import back into the Costex system, if it's not already there, Warehouse 05. So what we had created in that particular tutorial, I'm just gonna bring back in. So to do that, I'm just gonna close this building um, and I'm gonna top left hand corner, import back in Costex data and go to where I saved that Warehouse 05 workbook um, or that Warehouse 05 building and click open. Again, Warehouse 05 copiers will probably just be Warehouse 05. Click Select to import that in, and it'll go into a default project um, and select OK. So I've imported back in that building. If I was to open, I'd see it in there. I've got both my Warehouse 09 project and my Warehouse 05 project are building. So open up that Warehouse 09. Click Select. Just bear in mind that um, that Warehouse 05 project is also in the system. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new workbook. Now, I already have one in here in the costing view in Costex in Warehouse 09 uh, building, but uh, you probably won't. You won't have something there. That was just me doing a little bit of practice before I actually created this video. Um, so I'm going to click the Workbooks tab and I'm going to add a workbook. We've done this before. We're going to do something different with this though. We're going to add this workbook and we're going to name it BIM Dimensions. Although I already have a BIM Dimensions in there, so I'm going to name it BIM Dimensions BOQ. Now, if I inserted that particular workbook, it would be a blank workbook. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to base it on what I previously um, developed in that Warehouse 05 project. So I'm gonna drop down, it's in the default project, everything's in the default project in the educational version of Costex. And I'm gonna drop down then the actual building in that default project I'm looking for, and it's Warehouse 05 copy. So what I'm creating here is I'm creating a workbook in Warehouse 09 based previously on Warehouse 05. So that's fine, I'm gonna click insert. Um, there'll be a lot of errors that comes up here, warnings, and that's basically telling me that the quantities in this workbook are not linked to the quantities in my new building, which is the case. I'm gonna create those links. Um, so click OK, and now we have our BIM Dimensions BOQ workbook, um, and it was essentially, well, it was it was the substructure, that, that was all that was in there. We don't have external walls or internal walls or doors or windows or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once I have that workbook um, created, I'm gonna double click into subtotal in that particular element. And here I have, well, a number of dimensions, descriptions and dimensions for what I have produced in Warehouse 05. Now some of them will be blank. Some of the ones that I manually measured are just inserted without any sort of link between the dimensions and the workbook will still be there because they weren't linked dimensions. Um, but ultimately I need to populate this particular workbook um, or this particular element with what I've created in terms of BIM dimensions. So it's kind of a good exercise to see what I can use in terms of BIM dimensions or correspond those BIM dimensions to what I manually measured and see what is useful and what is possibly not useful in respect to measuring from a BIM model rather than measuring from 2D drawings. So let's just kind of start at the top here. Top soil for preservation, this is something I can't get from the model. That was, if you can remember, the footprint of the building to the outer edge of the excavations. And it's something that you probably won't see as a quantity in a building information model because there is no kind of 
topsoil modeled quantity now there could be but in this particular case there's not so that's something that i probably would have to manually measure or at least derive possibly from a model quantity but in this case it is something i would have to manually measure now i'm not going to go over that again but i could actually manually measure that from um, one of my 2d views okay same with the reduced levels because that's also derived from that particular footprint so that is something i would also have to manually measure um, and in this case i'm just going to leave it so starting with the foundation trenches so again there is already some descriptions in there in that quantity sheet i'm going to delete them because they're just based on what was already there and i'm going to click on my folder 19 substructure and my subfolder structural foundations so what's shown here is the volume of concrete that's not what i want i want the excavation volume but if you can remember we actually measured the excavation volume as a secondary quantity or at least generated the quantity from the model as a secondary quantity so i can utilize that by dragging and dropping over that quantity drop it in the length or the width or any one of those columns and drop down excavation do the same for the wall foundation drop down make sure it's excavation there is a difference between the volume of concrete and the volume of excavation so it's important that you do select that and click update so there we have pile cap rectangular excavation quantity and wall foundation quantity which is the strip and ground beams and there we have 49 meters cubed of excavated material for foundations so scroll down a little bit more I'm going to leave them as is because they were provisional quantities nothing that we derive from a manual measurement or a BIM quantity so we just leave them uh, working space is again not something that will show up in the BIM model or it won't be essentially a model quantity that will be something I'll have to either derive from um, the model or a model quantity or most likely I'll have to manually measure so I'm just going to leave that one as is um, again the same with these you know I suppose provisional items for disposal of water surface water and groundwater and some of the disposal items I can't really do anything with because they're derived from the items up here for topsoil and reduced levels so I'm just gonna leave them as well Excuse material and start with something I can work with and that is um, imported hardcore so the filling isn't something I can actually do either if I come down here to imported hardcore uh, filling to excavations that's to either side of the rising wall in the excavation um, or in the excavated trench um, that is something that I probably won't be able to get from the model but something I can get from the model um, is this filling to make up levels so I just double click into that um, and that was essentially the ground floor area so I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to select, um, I think it's in my BIM dump, in my floors category. I'm going to select that 194 meters squared. So that's the area of my ground floor. I drop it in there to my length. And, well, it's already there as a, as a quant. So click update. And I think the height of that hardcore is 0.225. So we'll just type that in, 0.225. And then return. So there we, have, there we have it, 44 meters cubed of hardcore um, to the ground floor. Sand blinding, again to the ground floor. I can just take that 194, drop it in as a surface quantity, click update. So you can see that some of these ladder quantities um, are quite useful or can be used from my BIM dimensions. Um, the blinding to, I suppose, the underside of my concrete foundations, again, something I can derive from my uh, BIM model by taking the area of my foundations. So this is the volume of my foundations, but if I select, again, drop it in length and take the area of my pile caps, update, and take the area of my, well, it says wall foundations here, but these are my strip foundations or ground beams, click area and then multiply that area by a height of 50 millimeters or 0 0.05 a meter 0 0.05 of a meter once i come back out i've got a quant of four meter cube there for my lean mix blinding to the underside of my foundations that next item there is bunk 
bulk filling. Um, again, a provisional quantity, not something I can derive from the model. Um, scroll down, sundries filling cavity walls, possibly something I'll, I'll have to manually measure. Again, nothing I have here in terms of a BIM quantity. This one will be fairly straightforward. My, well, the volume of my concrete in my foundation. So let's just delete what's there. And uh, double click into the quantity sheet. And all we're doing in this case is taking the volume of our foundations and its primary quantity. So I don't, need to, I don't need to change it. So I can come back out of that. And I have 23 meters cubed of uh, concrete foundations. Concrete beds then, again, something I can use from my model. Um, what I might need to do is double click into the quantity again and take that ground floor slab area. So I'll drop it into my length, take it as the area and multiply it. I believe it's 0.15 or 150 millimeters in thickness. So area times the thickness will give me my meter cubed, 30 meters cubed of concrete beds. The design joints themselves are not showing up in my BIM model. They weren't modeled, so that's something I might have to manually measure. Um, surface finishes, power floating, that's quite straightforward. I'm gonna use again that 194, click update. Um, the reinforcement, this is also a quantity that I measured in my BIM model, or from my BIM model. Um, as a secondary quantity. So I'm just, I'm just gonna delete what's there. I'm gonna double click into my quantity sheet and in my structure foundations, if you hover over the quantity, you'll see a weight there. So that was my reinforcement. If you can remember from my model maps, I derived that weight from the volume of my concrete by multiplying the volume by, I think it was 150 kg per meter cube divided by a thousand to turn it into tons. So I'm just gonna take that 30 meters cubed, drop it into my length, drop down to weight. Click update, do the same for my strip foundations, just underneath the pile caps. Make sure you take the weight and not one of the other secondary quantities or even the primary quantity. And if you can remember, I'm actually gonna divide this five tons into 30% um, or 33% um, in each of those categories because I didn't have a reinforcement schedule. I just based it on a kind of a rule of thumb of weight per meter cubed of concrete. So to divide it into the different categories in my area M4 in terms of the different descriptions, I'm just gonna multiply it by a factor of 333. Or 0.3333. Okay, now they're rounded to the nearest whole number, so I might just bring that up there, show exactly what it is, come back out, it's around two tons, but in the actual tonnage of steel, I want that to two decimal places. Um, so I'm just gonna right click, edit function, and I'm gonna change the rounding decimal places to two. So click update. And I'm gonna copy and paste those values into the different categories. So if you can remember from our manual, me manual measurement, I think we got 1.44, in this case we got 1.45. So we're close enough based on what we derived from, from the model. And we're basically dividing um, the total tonnage into those three different categories of, I suppose, size of steel. So coming down, again, that's the fabric reinforcement in our concrete bed, concrete ground floor bed. So I'm just gonna drop that quantity again, that 194 into that um, cell. Again, making a link between my BIM quantity and my bill of quantities workbook. Sides of foundations. Um, I'm gonna delete this. Okay, I'm gonna double click into the quantity. Again, if you can remember, if I hover over here, I've got a length of pile caps um, and I'm gonna drag and drop that over. And instead of taking the volume, I am gonna take the length Okay, click update. So I got 57 meters of kind of perimeter length of each one of those pile caps in terms of its total. And the wall foundation, I'm gonna drop under that and I'm gonna select not the length because I think if you can remember back, that length was, I suppose the quantity that was deriving from that model length was not correct because it was kind of taking the length and it was adding the width. 
but I did a little calculation on the true length. So I'm going to select that in this case and click update. Now on the wall foundation, I actually have, I suppose, sides of foundations on either side of that strip footing. So I'm going to multiply that by two. So if I come back out, I've got a total of 175. But if I just want to go back into my dimension view, and I'm going to select those two, or isolate, or sorry, hold on. I'm going to isolate those foundations. Isolate dimension group. So I just want to show my pads and my strip footings. So again, if you hover over any one of the foundations there, this is the strip footing, you see the length of 14.99, but the actual true length is 10.56 in that case. Um, so there is a bit of a difference between what was showing the length of that BIM dimension and what actually should have been the actual true length of it. I actually derived that that um, pad foundation was correct in terms of a length that's 1.8 by 1.8 um, and of course 1.8 times 4 in terms of perimeter length is 7.2 so that was correct in terms of, of what was showing up in the BIM properties. Um, so I actually derived my total length there previous, um, in, previous to this in the costing view but there is some over measurement here because there's some lapse between I suppose the sides of what will be formwork and between the pads and the strip footing. So I won't have any formwork here and here because I suppose it'll be one continuous length of concrete. Same goes between the pads and the internal foundations. So I'm, I wanna make sure I at least go back to my sides of my, my foundations and deduct out those overlaps. So deduct, um, say where there's a difference between the pads slash strips or an overlap between the pad and strips. And I think there is, um, in this case equals as eight pads times either side of that pad. So we've got 16 places times the width of the strip foundation is 0.9. Um, and I'm gonna minus that, minus one. Um, there's also four places in the internal foundations that there's an overlap. Um, so I'm gonna four times 0.815. And again, minus one. So coming back out, I've got 158 meters size of foundations. This item here, the four times essentially is there where there wouldn't be a side of foundation between that particular um, length of foundation and that particular length of foundation. Same goes with this. There wouldn't be one there, there, and there. So there's four places where we have an overlap that we need to, I suppose, duct out in our costing view. So we had a total there, we deducted out some kind of overlaps, came back out, and I've got 158 meters. So there is some, I suppose, manipulation of the BIM quantities to create these bill of quantity items. The next items here are brickwork blockwork. I've got brickwork and I've got 100 millimeter thick and 215 thick blockwork. Let's get back to the brickwork. I'll deal with the block work for the moment. I'm just gonna delete those two items. And I'm going to have a look at my rising wall block work here. Now a little bit different than how we manually measured those items. Here it's telling us the thickness of the wall um, or the overall thickness of the wall and it's not really giving us the makeup. So 425 mm -hmm. is actually in fact the 215 mm -hmm. inner block, 100 millimeter cavity or infill cavity and I think 100 meter block outer leaf to make up that 425. The 300 millimeter rising wall is um, 100 inner leaf, 100 cavity, 100 outer leaf, and the 215 is just 215 internal rising solid wall. So again, you can kind of get a feel for sometimes the model quantities that come from the model might, might not have been separated as parts in the actual Revit model and thus come in as one kind of lump sum, unless there's a description in the actual model for that particular item or the actual item is named as it's in uh, individual layers, it'll be, it could be quite hard to derive exactly what uh, constitutes that particular uh, dimension. But we know from, I suppose, our previous measurement, let's take, for example, our 425 rising wall, um, that if we go into that 100 millimeter thick 
quantity um, that the outer leaf of that 425 rising wall um, was I'm just going to drop it into the length was um, a hundred millimeter block in the 300 millimeter rising wall I'm just going to drop that in click area we'll have times two because we have an outer leaf and an inner leaf in that particular uh, wall so I just come out of that and 69 meters squared and go into the 215 tick so as I said before the 425 um, has a 215 block and of course the 215 rising wall also has a 215 block and click update so come out of there and we've got 69 meters squared of 100 millimeter thick block and 215 um, we've got 23 meters squared of that particular item in terms of the brickwork uh, but just delete that double click in the brickwork is both the rising wall 300 millimeter thick and the 425 rising wall but it was just essentially three bricks um which is 225 high of that four or six seven five high rising wall so one third of the outer leaf um of these particular rising walls is um brickwork so i'm just gonna multiply it by a third i might even actually subtotal it okay and i'm going to name that cell so if i came back out um i've got 13 meters squared of block work i'm just going to double click in um so what i did is i just added them together with a little subtotal function now i'm going to right click them i'm actually going to name that cell and i'm going to call it brick and i'm going to click ok so come back out of that i didn't really do anything there um, if I didn't subtotal it still would have subtotaled it or returned that quantity in there but because I named one of the cells I'm actually going to be able to use that in one of the other dimensions or in one of the other uh, quantity sheets so I'm going to go back into my 100 millimeter tick and I'm going to deduct the brickwork okay right click insert function and I'm going to go x get name cell it's in my BIM BOQ workbook, and it's the only name cell I have in there. So I'm getting a name cell, the only name cell that I've created. There it is, it's deriving it from, or linking it to, almost like a, a link to an Excel workbook where we go equals and select the, select the cell. And that is gonna be deducted, so I'm gonna just put a minus one in the factor. Okay, so here we have 30 meters squared of I suppose brickwork, 100 millimeter brickwork, 56 meters squared of 100 millimeter thick walls, and two and five um, thick walls at 23 meters squared. Um, the bonding, again, is something I won't derive from a BIM quantity. Um, the forming cavities, again, something I possibly have to manually measure. Um, the damp proof courses, this is something I actually can derive from my rising walls, so I double click in. And all those walls, if I take them, drop them in, drop down, take the length instead of the area. Um, and I've got two in this case here, and the 300, two leaves, and I've also got two leaves in the 425. So I was only one leaf or one wall in, the, in that two and five rising wall, but in the 300 rising walls and the 425 rising walls, I got two times um, or two leaves in each one of those, I suppose, overall wall items. So 137 meters there. Uh, moving down to my um, damp proof membrane, that one will be fairly straightforward. That's gonna be my 194. Click update and damp proof this is the vertical edge of my um i suppose my uh damp proof course so double click into that maybe delete what's there and in fact in this case i take the 194 drop it in but instead of area i'm going to take the length and click update so that's the edge length of the perimeter of I suppose my slab if I was to look at that in the dimension view 
right click isolate the dimension that is the outer edge of those slabs so it was again a secondary quantity that was came in as part of I suppose my overall area of that particular slab but I've got a length as well as the area in that case so if I come back out of that I've got 96 actually one thing I forgot to do here is put the height in of that particular slab and um, I think the height in this case if I can remember from my manual measurement was 225 and I come back out and I can use those quantities again in my next few items because they're the same for insulation and damp proof damp proof courses I can't really do a whole lot I've got eight uh, holding down assemblies to the eight columns and I've got a provisional sum there so you can see from that exercise that there was quite a few items there that I could either take as direct quantities from my BIM dimensions or I could use as kind of model derived quantities where there was you know a manipulation of an area by multiplying by a height to change of a volume or in the case of taking some of the secondary quantities be it a kind of vertical area a weight or an excavation volume from the secondary quantities of that of those BIM dimensions um, so I'd say out of you know all the items in that particular workbook I was able to populate about 60 or 70 percent of them from my BIM quantities so you can kind of get a feeling that when you're doing um, a BIM project you'll have a bit of manual measurement still you, you won't be able to derive all your quantities in a bill of quantities um, from a BIM model you'll have to actually look at the 2d views of that BIM model and you'll actually actually have to do some manual measurement thank you that that completes um module nine